everybody, I'm Coral, long time no see. Welcome back to my channel. Um, here today with a review of a new release book that I read just a couple days ago. It is called One by One and it is by Ruth Ware who is becoming quite a popular thriller writer. Uh, this is her sixth book I believe and the fourth one of hers that I've read. So I have two older ones that I haven't read yet. I feel a little bit conflicted with the books that I've read from her previously. I've read her first two. So in Dark Dark Wood and The Woman in Cabin 10. And I thought those were both really fun and like readable until you get to the end and it's like the reveal is just okay. And then I read her most recent release before this one called The Turn of the Key and I really liked that one. So I was very excited to pick up one by one, especially reading the synopsis and seeing that is it is a isolation book, a book that takes place where characters are stuck somewhere. And the reason they're stuck somewhere is because there's been a fucking avalanche, which sounds like such a great premise for a thriller. Ruth Ware is kind of infamous for these locked door thrillers, you know, where the character is in one location or the characters and, you know, they can't really leave that location. And I love that. I love that in thrillers and I love that in horror books and I just really, <laughs> really, like, if I only read those, I feel like I would be okay. So anyways, the premise of this book, I kind of told you a little bit about it, but like a, a little more in depth without spoiling, of course. There is this company, it's called Snoop and it's kind of a music app, but with this music app, you can snoop on people and see what they're also listening to. So like, for example, in the book, they talk about like Beyonce. You can see, you know, what your favorite celebrities are listening to and it's real time. So um, if they switch a song in the middle of the song or if, if they're done listening or if they fall asleep, it's like you're there with them while they're experiencing the same experience and um, kind of creepy. Don't know if I'd like to do that, but uh, it's a hit apparently in this book. So it's this fairly small um, tech company and they are on kind of a business retreat and they go up to these French Alps, I believe, and they are at a ski chalet and it's very posh. Um, so right away you are introduced to a bunch of characters and their profiles are all like in the very beginning of the book kind of like a like you're reading them off of snoop's website you know what i mean like an introduction to who developed this app um so that was kind of fun i guess the the way that was set up but there are quite a lot of people uh i felt like their personalities were enough to be able to tell them apart fairly well um however after i reviewed this on Goodreads. I was looking through some of the other reviews and um, some people seem to have an issue with that. And like, I can see why. There's like, you're like dumped into like 10 characters all of a sudden and you're expected to like understand who they are and all that. Um, this really takes place through two points of view though. One being a woman named Liz who formerly worked for Snoop and one being Aaron who is an employee at the ski chalet. The Snoop employees get to the ski chalet and they're settling in and they have a presentation given by one of the uh, founders of the company. I don't know if that would be a CEO uh, if they ever gave her that title, but uh, she basically brings up this really touchy subject and that is that she is trying to sell the company basically. And there is another founder there who really does not want to sell the company. And so obviously, that brings up basically the conflict for the book is that half of the company wants to sell and cash out and the other half doesn't. So there are tensions and there's conflict right out of the gates. So, um, you know, that dies down. They decide to go skiing since they are, you know, at a ski resort. And uh, while they are skiing, an avalanche happens and they are promptly snowed in and they realize 
that one of their crew members is not in the chalet with them that she is somewhere up on the mountain and uh they believe she has been killed so this is a murder mystery book uh of course <laughs> and um man i had some feelings about this didn't like it so much and it was really disappointing because like this premise is just set up for me personally just kidding, but kind of not kidding because this is, I mean, it ticks so many boxes off for me, but it really, like the the mystery part of it, it felt so like spoon fed. It was like so many uh, pages and pages of the characters like thinking out like, oh, well, so-and-so was here and then they did this. And it's like, they didn't leave a lot for the reader to figure out, figure out on their own. I didn't really buy the, reveal that much it just i don't know i don't want to give anything away i don't want to give any plot devices away especially for a book that's a thriller but i just wasn't that impressed it it did feel a lot closer to her first couple books than um her last couple books at least in my opinion and from what i've heard other people say about the last couple books. I also had kind of a hard time. I mean, this isn't, this doesn't really affect my review at all, but at the beginning of each chapter, when they talk about who is the narrator for that chapter, it has a little thing about their Snoop account. So it'll have their Snoop ID, what they're listening to, and uh, then there's two other categories and those are snoopers and snoop scribers. And I had such a hard time figuring out what that means. Like, is because both of those imply to me that it's people that they are, that are snooping on them. Like the amount of snoopers that they have and the amount of people who are, I guess, subscribed to snoop on them. But I feel, I don't know. I'm so confused by that. Because aren't you just counting like the same amount of things, I guess? I don't know. Or maybe, I don't know. It's, it's complicated. Listen, it's complicated. I spent so much time thinking about that for some reason. Like my brain just got caught up on it and I couldn't, uh, I don't know, get it out of my head for some reason. It was really stupid. So I guess that's what I have to say about One by One by Ruth Ware. Uh, if you are a huge fan of her earlier books, I think that this one, like I said, definitely feels like that to me. So I'm not saying don't, I'm never saying don't read this book. I'm just saying that I was a little bit disappointed, especially when it was, you know, just right down my alley. And then it turned out not to be. So I don't know. I think this would be a great book to read during the winter, maybe when you're in like a locked room house <laughs> uh maybe when you're cozied up by the fire when you're under like three blankets and you've got your fuzzy socks on because this definitely has a really great like cold atmosphere thing going on so uh yeah maybe if you're just thinking like i don't want to read this immediately but like maybe i want to read it sometime definitely suggest picking this up in the colder months. It's still not cold here. I still have to have my air conditioner on. I'm looking forward to some actual weather, which is 50 degrees here. <laughs> um, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you've read one by one or uh, if you plan to or what you think about Ruth Ware's books and like which ones do you feel like there's a big difference between her newer releases and her older stuff? Which do you prefer? Uh, have you read all of them? I don't know. I'm curious to hear what you think. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you again later. Goodbye!